is the uh, apex and this is the velocity. Uh, the easy way to, uh, to kind of tell uh, that it is the velocity is the fact that you can see here, there's just one bar. So I don't have, I don't have you know, the, the gain button on anymore. I only have uh, the exposure bar. And you look at the exposure bar, in this case here, you can see the camera actually goes uh, about 7,000 frames, uh, but it loses quite a bit to overhead. Uh, and of course, as you, as you go slower, you can see that it, um, this number doesn't change all that much and the image actually doesn't uh, change all that much. So right now, again, we are in what's called high rate and super mode. This is the mode that's basically made for um, going super, super fast. Um, if for some reason I didn't want to go this slow or, or fast, I could go out of super mode or should I turn off high range mode, uh, but this will require a ca camera reset. There's honestly very little reason to ever uh, change out of the super mode. So over here again, you can see the raw pattern, you can see my background pattern, and in this case, you can see uh, the live pattern in real time. Uh, I have a feeling, did we re-blank our beam over here? Yeah, so let me go ahead and unblank my beam. So now I'm scanning it again, and we can see that I have a much higher signal. That's what I was expecting. So here again, you can see- uh, Hey, Sean, real quick. So yep. if I remember right, the super mode, um, that basically changes it from, what just changes the bit range on it, right? Yeah, it changes the bit range so that it uses the, the uh, basically a higher bit range. Uh, and we and, and, and honestly, this is one of the things when we start with this camera. I don't think we fully understand it. Um, I, I will I will tell you, I don't think it's any big giant secret. Um, this, this camera does have some changes um, for for EBSD, but this is uh, this camera is made by one of our one of our sister companies called Vision Research. Uh, this this camera is, is, is more made for like. Uh, um, like like missile testing, uh, than than um, than EBSD, uh, but um, but yeah, it's it's it does the job. And super mode is, is one of those things that again we don't fully understand uh, what it's doing, um, but it does what it needs to do. So yeah, if you ever want to, this is you know in, in in 20 years when you retire this system or whatever, I steal that camera, man. It's it's, it's an awesome camera and that can be done. With, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, I, I have I have one laying around that I've, I've played with before. And again, it's it w w when we told uh, Vision what we do with their camera, they they were like, it can do that <laughs> uh, because we we do it completely differently. Um, it, it's literally made to do snapshots of like of like burst camera mode, where like again like a like a bullet or like an explosion or a car crash is supposed to take like it, it's got. Um, a whole bunch of memory on the camera and then it just takes it all and then dumps it all um and we've okay. done a couple of tricks to basically make it like a, a rotating pooper so it's, it's 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 just weird um so this is apex uh, again i'll start over here by uh, uh kind of pulling in my image again if i wanted like a, a prettier image uh, i could use this pull down here there we go see it's done ebsd on the sample before uh, if i click over here let's see come on there we go if i click here you can see there's like a pull out menu uh, where again, I can change my matrix size, my dwell times, my uh, my tilt correction all is kind of a kid in, in, in this little kind of pull out down here. Uh, camera uh, optimization is, is 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 literally this easy. Um, in this case here, I've I basically just changed my exposure a little bit. When I change my exposure, I should take uh, a new uh, new image. Boy, this is laggy. Uh, so again, here I click on SEM area. It takes a new background. Uh, so now that I, I do this, I can see my background is a little bit stronger. And I go ahead and, um, and click, maybe. There's my pattern. So remember what I told you about you don't need pretty patterns. Well, this is, a, again, a perfectly indexable pattern. Do uh, you know the working distance is on this system? I could probably, well... I will go over here and I will click on this guy up here, which is you. And I'll go on, click on an account. And what I'm trying to do right now is, is there's information uh, that's passed over to us by the microscope that can be very useful to have. So I go down here to status bar items. And I want working distance, magnification, something nobody uses the same name for, high tension. I'll put the takeoff angle in. And I'll turn on some EDS stuff as well. 
what I'm doing down here is this bar, this blue bar down here. It gets a little laggy, so I'm not sure where my mouse is right now. There's this blue bar. Uh, this blue bar, I'm basically saying, hey, what do I want down there? This is a, a user kind of thing. So now I can see that my uh, uh, my working distance is 19.9. Uh, I knew it was on the longer side because you can see um, my pattern center is a little low. So usually for UBSD, we want the pattern center to be for for like the optimal results. We want it to be around two thirds of the way up the phosphor screen. You see how the gradient here is a little bit more towards the middle or towards the bottom bottom two thirds, so the top two thirds. Uh, that's because again I'm at a little bit longer working distance. If I had indexing problems where again I'm having problems maybe because I don't have a good enough signal up here on top, I would move this a little bit higher in dub and be say hey I get better coverage over the whole area. I don't think it's going to be a problem though. So right now I'm running at uh, 3,500 frames per second. I have um, go over here to scan real quick. And I can see that I have FCC and BCC loaded. Uh, this is FCC sample, so I'm just going to turn this off. Um, it just basically makes the indexing a little bit better in case of weird things happen. And right now you can see it says if I do 250,000 points in one minute and I click on collect. And it's going to run a map. Now the problem with the map here is that it's going to go start on fast. I can't really talk over it. So just look at that data quality from from like again like Hari to this. Um, it just collects high quality so quickly uh, that it's, it's just mind boggling to me. Um, here we can see uh, this is the CI through time. Uh, it's no longer in the smiley face. It's actually right there with the data. So you actually can say, oh hey, this line actually lines up. Uh, you can see that it's also very dark. Here you can see I can turn on Prius uh, live. Go ahead and turn this off. Um, pretty boring on the top. Go ahead and change this to the middle. There you go. There you can see the uh, a little bit of the contrast there from the Prius center. And then if I go to Prius bottom, again you can see there's a little bit of topography and the carbides kind of pop out. So again you can see like uh, right there is a carbide. Uh, this is probably some sort of uh, a VUG. You can see a little bit of three-dimensionality here. Um, so again, I can see a combination of the three-dimensionality and the carbides just tend to really pop out a little bit more here. Let's see if these, these guys pop out. No, they don't. I'm just kind of surprised. So again, this is a Prius who really kind of gives me a good idea of like, just what's going on with the samples just based off of, you know, just, just, just again, this kind of you know, structure going on. And now, since I did a quick map, it's already done. So we're good. I'll see you guys in an hour. Uh, we're good. Um, but uh, but not really. The uh, let me go ahead and make this a longer map so I can talk over it more. It's one of the nice things right now about doing product demos. Again, with the velocity, it's actually difficult because oh, you want to show the speed, but at the same time, you want to be able to talk while it's doing stuff. So now I just changed it to fine. So it's doing around 1.2 million pounds counts. Now it's doing about uh, points. It's doing a uh, seven minute time. Go ahead and click on collect so I can talk over it more. By the way, always feel free to plasma clean the uh, the, the 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 system with the EVSD detector on. I can see your chamber is kind of on the dirty side. Yeah, on this chamber, we don't have a plasma cleaner inside it, so it's from the master system. Yeah, don't don't worry, mine. I have a I actually have a system with an oil diffusion pump still, so it's it's absolutely <laughs> filthy. So here again, you can see I can actually click between the color maps here between phase, CI. And IQ. Again, this is a good shows really kind of the uh, the image quality for the patterns here um, are, are pretty good. Again, they go down around grain boundaries, and then of course the CI also um, goes down around grain boundaries. So here you can see it goes down, down, down. I usually do most of my maps with uh, just IPF, and I kept the IQ off. So this is giving me a true kind of idea of what's going on. Um, if you want, sometimes you can see you drop grain boundaries here. Uh, you can if you turn the IQ on, it hides them. So again, you can see if you really wanted like a, a high quality map and like a publication or something, uh, just do a co like combination of this and you can kind of you can kind of hide the, a little bit of the stuff that gets ugly, so to speak. These just look prettier in general too. Over here, you can see the live pattern. So there's a pattern and close to live time. They can't show every pattern, right? It's going too fast to do that. You also have your band detection. So again, you can see that 
that here the it, it's it's a little fuzzy because again your learn, your working distance feels a little long. I'd probably be closer to 15 to 12 on this system, um, and it'd give you a better a little better there. And you also can see the huff here is going to be kind of clustered around the bottom. So again, you can see everything is basically in the bottom two thirds here, uh, because again there's a little bit of a, a pattern quality loss because of the uh, the relatively long working distance. This just shows you the indexing results. Uh, and the crystal bouncing around. And of course the full figure filling in in real time. Here we go. And there we go. So again, here you can see the, what it's actually doing in real speed. So this is the uh, points per second. So right now we're, we're doing about 3,300 uh, points per second, which is double what the high card could even try to do uh, at max speeds. Uh, and we're doing, uh, we've already done half a million points right now. In the three and a half minutes I talked over this. So yeah, again, velocity fast, easier to set up. Um, again, I, your users probably should be using the velocity more than the, the Hikari, but it sounds like they're more used to the Hikari. This is one of the side benefits we didn't really think about when we made the velocity, just to get how easy uh, it is to set up and get good quality results, but it's turned into a selling point. Any questions so far, comments? It really is that easy. Yeah, so there's some funky stuff with the microscope. So the reason, well, it's at 20 is why I've been writing things at because I know there's a cold finger in there right now. That uh, okay. if you don't have it oriented right, you're going to hit pretty easily. So. I can get a little bit closer with it if needed, like you oh, said fine. before. Again, it, it shows you, like, again, this is a good case where um, if, if I stop this, I think, uh, again, my, my results are fine, right? So so we can see there's ways I can optimize this further. I could go to a higher working distance, which would make my pattern center closer. I could take that huff, I could increase it to uh, get a higher vertical bias. But even with those problems, again, my pattern quality up in this top third of my of my patterns is, is pretty blurry. So let's go ahead and click on pattern. It's gonna, oops, you stole my mouse, I think, over to your screen. Come back. Where's my mouse there? There we go. Um, so if I go back over here to this pattern, you can see again where I, I don't have very good definition up here, uh, kind of in this like top crescent area. And again, I showed you where the huff is, is not doing a good job. If I stop this, And again, it takes a little while to stop because it's, it's, it's basically making a file as we speak. Uh, and these files get huge because, again, we, we just did almost a million data points without even thinking about it. Um, if you do a million data points on a high car, you're talking, you know, an hour. Um, here's my stats again, nice and good stats, what we expect to see. So now I go over here to this Huff tab. Go ahead and get a pattern real quick. And you can see how they're kind of scrunched down here towards the bottom. Um, definitely some lines there that I think I could get. Go ahead and click on plus one, two, three. So now you can see I'm getting a little bit higher patterns. I'm not sure I completely believe that the, that the line there or not. Uh, but now if I go back to a, do a map, click on collect and have it start to go again. Watch the huff. You can see that it's, it's just much getting much bigger. You know, it, it's it's more spread out than it was uh, with the uh, with the other one. And hopefully, if we look at the, the bands here again, you can see I'm getting a much uh, cleaner, um, more um, spread out uh, huff band being found. And because of that, again, I tend to just have a little bit uh, better data. Good good teaching moment, right? Man, this looks pretty. I got. I, I got to tell you, one thing that drives me nuts right now at work is that my microscopes are starting to get up there in age, and I can't take full advantage of the velocity. So again, I have a, I have a a, a, a twenty, I think it's a twenty-two-year-old Joel. The thing has more beam current than you could ever want in a microscope. 
I can get like 250 nano out of that thing, no problem. But the beam conditions at those aren't that great. <laughs> well, I knew a microscope has got this like, you know, pinpoint beam at, you know, 60 nano amps. That would be great to have, uh, but I just don't have one. So, cool. But again, you can see that again, just those changes give much better coverage uh, over here. So honestly, that's all the, I have for like actually optimizing the velocity. I, I mean, I wish it was, was more, more difficult, but it's, but it's not. Again, it's very, very simple to kind of set up scans. Uh, some of the things I find useful in Apex um, is going to be, again, I have easy access to all this kind of information relatively quickly. Uh, but um, honestly, uh, the biggest change for me uh, has really been uh, the ability to uh, essentially um, pick and choose phases easier. So again, if in team, if I wanted to add or remove a phase, I would have to go here and, and add the phase, but to remove it, I'd have to again basically remove it. So here I search for ferrite again. Oops. Why don't I have ferrite? Ferrite. So I got a feeling your database has got switched over. No. Why didn't you find ferrite for me? Oh uh, man, do we rename it for some reason? I have a feeling your database is weird. What's going on? Oh, no, it's turned on. TSL. This shouldn't matter. Interesting. You don't have ferrite in your TSL database, but it is on your user database. I'm not sure how that would get switched over. Um, so I'll just go ahead and delete this guy. Click on OK. So now what I can do with something like this is I can basically, again, I can quickly uh, click here, uh, have an index. In this case here, you can tell the difference between, between this. But I can say, hey, only index this as ferrite. And then on re-index. And now it's going to index just as, uh, just as ferrite. And you can say, hey, this isn't ferrite. And you're like, yep, you are correct. So again, it's a nice quick way of, of, of basically cycling through things uh, if you are kind of trying to do like a, a phase ID thing. Uh, the other thing that's going to be really useful here is, um, how do I want to do this? So let me go ahead and actually turn these back off. Again, I'm lagging pretty hard here, so it's uh, biting me a little bit. Go ahead and turn this back off, this back off. One of the nice things is, let's say I have a brand new phase file, and um, I can see it's like missing a band on, on the reflector list. So let me go ahead and, and index this. Again, this is indexing bad on purpose because it's, it's what I'm trying to show here. So right now, if I turn on this band ID, and I draw a line on a, on a band, it's going to give me the Miller indices of this band. So draw a line here. It's going to ask me, do I want to add this reflector? So right now I'm saying, okay, I found the negative 755 reflector. If I click on yes, it's going to add it over here to the reflector list for, for basically everybody to use. So I can say, yep, add this to the reflector list. And now when it indexes it, it's going to index using this reflector. Again, when do I want to use this? It's like if I had like a brand new phase file that I brought in and I could tell it's missing an important reflector, like a 111 or a 113 or something. A 755, I would probably fiddle around with to see if I could get that to uh, like a 111, right? Because if I, if I drew this line a little bit off, um, it's going to find it as a 755. But if I drew the line a little bit, maybe a little bit more precise, again, this is a bad example because it's, it's not actual real sample, right? It's, I'm using lines on a, on a, on a misindexed material. Uh, so here you can see this is close to a, uh, if I kind of round this down, this would be close to a, a, a one. Oh, I can't quite do that all the way. But uh, you can see this is like a, a one to two to, or excuse me, a, a six to 12 to two ratio, which I could you know round down. Uh, I could say, okay, let's add that reflector uh, over here on the list. Again, they, they should be relatively, you know, high symmetry reflectors. You don't expect to see a one, one, seven, you know, one one seven to be important for this kind of things, but like a two two two, even a two two three would be important. Here you can see that a three one four is important. So again, these general reflector uh, 
ideas. You can actually add these um, to a, a, you know, material that you just brought in. Uh, don't use too many though. Actually, is this? You guys might have a, a bad a bad list on here, and I'll show you what a bad list is. I'm going to search for a mineral called uh, probably one of the most important minerals that exist, um, if I can type. And it is called olivine. That's what I did my master's degree on. Go ahead and turn the AMCS database on. Did I spell it wrong? Come on, lag, you can do it. I believe in you. Come on. Sometimes I feel like New Jersey is a third or a third world country. Oh, is that, yep, yep, there we go. O L I V. Uh, your databases are weird. Something, something's, it's, something's funky. The fact that, um, your fair right was not in your in your thing, and the fact that I can't find olivine is telling me that your your databases are weird. So I definitely bring that up with uh, reinstalling the databases um, with your service guide, uh, Daniel, because the olivine is actually an example here where I think in this version it has like a thousand reflectors, um, and it slows the indexing down to like a sub per second because it's doing the lookup table so big. Um, but your, your your database is wonky to begin with, so definitely talk with um, your service guy about that. And I'm trying to think if there's actually anything else I want to uh, I want to uh, show you guys. Again, it's actually really simple. We talked about the cal I talked about the calibration, but again, you can actually change the calibration files to your here. You can see a uh, nice good calibration. You can see the Y star is the one really with the most here. When we look at the Y star errors, we can see they're relatively low. So again, this is a, a good calibration. Everything's relatively close. Uh, and again, here's the uh, the actual data your calibration. There are other calibration files in here. Uh, that he has for, for different setups. And again, this is new to uh, to Apex. And you guys have, sound like you have found this relatively useful. And of course, I can see your detector was in a little bit more here because we're at 73 degrees solid angle, which is what we want. I'm trying to think of any anything I really missed. I mean, honestly, it's 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 pretty straightforward. I mean, the um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything I need to tell you guys. And, I think we're good. That's the nice thing about the velocity. Again, it's it's so simple to set up that it's it's like, oh, yep, do nothing, and you're good to go. Questions, comments? If not, I think we're gonna have a little bit of longer break till the uh, to the clarity stuff. Can you try and push it up to the 4,500 since we're at what? We're at 35 or so. Sure. A, yeah, I mean, all I really have to do is show. Just, yeah. go, go slower. So usually what this is, is if you go down here to um, 17 milliseconds. Come on. It's not 17, it's 0 0.17, but what's, a, what's an order of magnitude between friends? Come on, leg. You can do it. Yeah. One, 18, 17. Anytime I do this, I should change, take a new background. So right now you can see the background's pretty bad. Uh, I do believe I'm rastering. So hopefully it's a good background. And we can go ahead and basically that should be about it. Uh, my theta I think was already at two. So the only other thing I had to do is basically check my theta. My theta angle is at one. It would not go full speed. And this should be close to 4,500. Yeah, there we go. Ta-da, magic. Here you can see the, the 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 sample condition. I got a feeling your sample's pretty dirty. Um, so that is ca causing a little bit of, of, of quality loss here. Uh, but uh, here you can see again the sample. The, the strength, sample strength is a little meh. Um, it's a little bit higher quality would give us a little bit uh, better results here. And you can say, hey, say, saying, hey, you know, I'm not quite uh, where I want to be. The other question here is. That, is we always, you know, your microscope says it's at 26, but how well is that calibrated as well? So there you go. You can see it's doing 4,700 with without a without a care in the world right now. 
at this point, you have to realize that literally every millisecond counts, right? Because if you go from like, you know, 15 to 17, two milliseconds from 15 is, is, is basically one seventh signal strength. That's a lot of, that's a lot of signal at this kind of level. So right now you can see this is doing 4,700. Uh, if I go back to my camera tab and let's go ahead and um, let's go to 18. And let's go ahead and see what 18 does. So eight, so 17 to 18 is still a pretty big jump in signal strength. I should have probably taken a new background, but I didn't. And it's slightly better. Not perfect, but it's slightly better. We and then say this this probably will not get forty five hundred. I should take a new background. So there's a little bit of overhead here. So right now you can see it's a 4,700. It probably runs closer to, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know what this system is. Which calibration like file is being edge. used? I don't know if. Oh, did I switch it maybe? I don't think I did. Oh, it could be that too. Um, I think it was the yeah. one from like March where it said, March 20 something, or March 9th, 2020. I think it should be the newer one, maybe. I don't know. I have to look at it and see. Yeah, the, 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 the I could say, the, yeah, it could be yet the, um, the one we were playing uh, with the other day, I think, oh, was, was the newer it's one. It's on BCC and Fair, right? Oh. <laughs> there we go. Talk about this. It has to have something chosen, so well, let me choose that. There we go. So let's see what it does at uh, 4,700 then. Yeah, <laughs> you okay. see it's already perfect. So now we can see we're, we're about uh, 500 patterns per second below our spec, uh, but we are going much slower than our spec, so let's go ahead and uh, push it. So again, I usually do this around uh, 17. <laughs> Two, three, four. And then let's see what actually goes through. Oh, come on, lag. There we go. Um, and then, so whoop, I changed this by quite a bit. I need to take a new background. Again, uh, every click at this point is, is a very large percentage of your signal strength. Um, and now, so this right here should go full speed. This should get us to probably closer to like 4,700. So there you go. There's uh, there's your velocity at uh, 4,900. Your system is good enough, I wonder. So I've hit 5,000 on a couple systems. I wonder what we can, if we can do it with yours. So the absolute lowest this camera can go is 15. So right now we're at 15, it doesn't go any lower. And then new background. I think it took a new background. I'm going to take a new background just in case again. There we go. Now I can be for sure it took a new background. And then click on collect. There you go, 5,000. And that's probably about as fast as you're gonna get. Yeah, that's because as long as your sample can take it, it doesn't contaminate too much, which yeah, I'm surprised it's okay. Where is, do they keep that? So this is always fun because you can show the logical processors and you can show, oh, it's showing the actual. So this is, this is an 18 core system. Um, oh, 
why do they every every Windows change seems to just change things sometimes? Because I, I show this as um, because it, it's it's 18 processors used as 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 two each, so you can actually get 32 cores out of those, or 32 um, threads out of the thing. Um, so it's always fun to see all 32 going at, at full speed. This computer's a beast. You can see it's a, it's a self-overclocking system, so it's it's sold as a 2.6. It actually overclocks itself over to four, um, four gigahertz. Um, but our code doesn't doesn't overclock that well, so it, it maxes out around what we're at right now. So we're doing a pretty consistent 5,000 frames per second. And then let me just look for something real quick. I'm turning the IPF off. Um, I'm looking for um, something I've seen on some systems. Yeah, there's a little bit here. I do notice that on, for some systems, and I, I fully don't quite understand the problem, the IQ map um, does streak sometimes over here. See how there's a couple of bright pixels over here? Yeah, you can, yeah, I've artifact. seen that streaking a little bit there before. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's an artifact that I don't fully understand. It has to do with, um, I think there's a slightly variable dwell time. So I think you get a slightly better pattern because of the IQ gets, uh, gets a little bit higher. So it has to do with some sort of reset okay. time going back over here to the right hand side. Okay. So again, I mean, you don't usually use IQ maps for, you know, high quantitative work kind of things. So it's usually not a, not a big problem, but I, it does, doesn't affect the indexing. It just makes this look a little wonky. There you go. Max speed. Can we sell it at 4,500, easily hit 5,000. There's a reason for this, by the way. The reason is, is that uh, um, the, the 4,500 spec is, is actually really easy to hit. Except on some systems, um, some systems uh, have slightly worse beam conditions, so I start dropping grain boundaries. Um, and if we, when we sell our systems, um, we sell these systems with a spec that is very, very specific. We say that at X nanoamps, we're going to do 4,500 percent uh, points per second at 99 percent indexing. So we, we're giving you, you know, indexing quality. We're giving you, uh, you know, sensitivity quality. Um, all, all basically at the same time. And because of that, again, there are some systems who need a little bit more wiggle room than, than this guy does. So be thankful that you have a, a high end, or not, I mean, this isn't even a high end microscope. This is a, you know, just a, a good thermoscope uh, in this case. But some of the competitors do not have quite as good beam conditions at uh, 30 nanoamps or 25 or whatever we're at. Yeah, there's, like with all these systems, there's always tricks like um, and that company worked with, um, well, they know as well um, that it takes a while for the beam to stabilize under certain conditions. So I did cheat a little bit and turn the beam on earlier. <laughs> so it'd be nice and stable for this. Yep. Yeah. Again, so I know. Uh, there's all the little cheating things, or I would say all the nuances of learning the microscope and the differences in cameras and all that kind of stuff to figure out how to get that really good data. So. Yep. Yeah. I know we have, uh, there's, um, uh, MSA, the Micro Analytical Society, or MAS, excuse me, did a, a good TKD uh, webinar a couple weeks ago with um, Chad Parrish. Um, and he talks about where he will only run TKD uh, basically on weekends when nobody's around because <laughs> footsteps, he can see footsteps in his data. So it's like if people are around, it's too much. Uh, so he just only does it at night. Uh, so it's, it's crazy when you're, getting, when, you're, when you're trying to do high quality work. Um, everything matters. I mean, it can literally be air conditioning. Uh, it can be a, be, a, be a big change. And um, yeah, again, it's always interesting to see, you know, it's like some places will have microscopes like next to a freight elevator and wonder why they don't get good data. And then other places will, you know, spend a million bucks to build a room for, for a $300,000 microscope. <laughs> so I've seen that for colleges, by the way. Oh, the room was a million bucks. Oh, cool. Microscope. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a little overkill for that microscope, but it, it'll work. So that's all I got, I think. Again, if you don't have any other questions.